Lord, we pray over these words of Scripture today. And God, I ask that you would speak to each of us. God, use me because of myself or quite possibly in spite of. But God, your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. I've never been real good at walking around with a microphone, let alone one with a cable. We'll see how this goes. Is this close enough? I can see every one of you now. As we look at the text today, Jesus prays for his disciples. And there's some interesting things in this text that we see. First of all, we always miss the mark. We miss the mark that Jesus was praying for his 12 disciples. I've read this a couple times, and then I said, oh, I'm a disciple, but he was praying for the 12 that were in front of him right there before Jesus was going to go to the point of death for each of our sins. This was just before Holy Week, what we're reading. As Jesus was praying to his Father above, he's praying these words. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they've obeyed your word. Now they know everything that you've given me comes from you. Sometimes in church and in things, times of liturgy, we get stuck and we lose the meaning of things we say. For instance, I have a friend of mine that pastors a very large church. At the time, a few years back, he was at the pulpit. They were worshiping about 200 people into one service, and he's like me. Many times he'll multitask his mind. That's a genius thing. You may call it not, but I think it's a genius thing. But what I tell you is this. He was at the pulpit, and he said in his mind to himself, he's saying the Lord's Prayer, and he goes, I wonder how many times I've said the Lord's Prayer in my ministry of 23 years. And he stopped speaking, and he got lost mid-sentence. And forgot. He said it was at that moment when he started to pray the prayer again and picked it up. He had to consciously think about the words, where they were, and what they meant. It caused him a moment that he would see uh, what the words were again and fall back to his first love. We do that a lot of times at um, page 95 uh, after the offering. And we just sang it three minutes ago. What's the first line? Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Jesus was giving us these words before we wrote that little nice song where it was written. Jesus was saying, Father, they were yours. You gave them to me, and they've obeyed your word. Everything that you have given me comes from you. As we look in the text and we see this, we begin to see how Jesus how Jesus was returning all favor, all thanks back to God the Father. In church, many times we miss the mark. I'll come over to you and say, boy, I thank you for what you've done. No can reach. Twelve inches too short on this cable. I'll come over to you and say, thank you. Or thank you for your prayers. Okay, it's good to have a heart of thanksgiving. In Christian thanksgiving, the heart of thanksgiving sounds like this. I thank God for you. I thank God for your prayers. I thank God for your service. See, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And sometimes we praise God for some blessings that flow, right? And we forget the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all blessings. As Jesus was there with his disciples, we can see the prayer that he prayed just a few minutes before. See, his Jesus' prayer in the 17th chapter of John, the first five verses, reads like this. Jesus looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you've granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. 
I brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. We know Jesus did die on the cross. And some New Age theology wants to teach that Jesus maybe didn't really die. Maybe he was kind of like sleeping a little bit. But I can't read the Bible and see that Jesus didn't die for my sins. I can't read the Bible without tears in my eyes seeing that this Jesus, this human and divine, this Savior went to the cross and died for my sins. My sins when I didn't deserve forgiveness, Jesus forgave. Jesus died on the cross and he died and was dead. And on the third day, if you've heard the story. Thank you. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus starts with a prayer to his Father that he can be used one more time. That Father would use him. Remember, he was part of the Father. God the Father sent his Son, but the Son was of him. And he sent Jesus. And Jesus is asking, use me, Lord. Use me, Father, one more time. For your service, that your will would be done. In Jesus' prayer for his disciples, Jesus prays, and in the prayer he prays, he asks that we be sanctified by the truth. Your word is truth. The Bible teaches in John chapter 8, teaches the truth shall set you free. Bible teaches in John 10, verse 10. In another place, it teaches that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But yet, it says, I have come, Jesus, to give you free and abundant life. Jesus don't want anybody bound up in hurt and pain and unforgiveness and hearts that are hardened and hurt. But yet, it's never happened here, has it? Amen. My work's done. I don't need to be here another year. It's all forgiveness, all love, all grace. Everybody's saved in the whole community, and it's all hope. No. We failed at this church just like every other human being that's been in a church. We go back to try it again. We got to keep trying it again. The Bible does teach that, that, that God teaches that faith is like this. Put one foot in front of the other. Walking down the path of victory in Jesus. That means you ask the Father to forgive you when you mess up. Forgive my neighbors. Forgive my feelings. Forgive my actions. And over and over and over, we have to be in a heart of forgiveness and love just like Jesus. Remember Jesus' disciples wanted to ask, do you want to shoot fire down on them and burn them up and get rid of them? Jesus said no. Can't give you the exact place right off my mind right now, but remember, they were having some problems. And the disciples said, call fire down from heaven. Jesus said, no. The prayer Jesus gives at the end of the 17th chapter, Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. Them being for the twelve including the one who betrayed him. His prayer is not for just the twelve. Jesus said, I pray for also for those who will believe in me through their message, being the twelve, that they all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I'm in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory you gave me that they may be as one as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you've loved me. Father, I want, to give, I want those you've given me to be where I am, see my glory, the glory you've given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, Jesus says, I know you. And that they 
and they know that you have sent me, I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and I myself may be in them. Jesus Christ loves everybody. The Bible teaches in John 3.16, and for those of you that, that know it, please join with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible goes on in 3.17, when we miss the mark a lot on this one. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but yet that the world may be saved through him. I was never taught that one as a kid. I always thought that I had to do all these things. In fact, there's a teaching called works righteousness. I believed I had to do more works to receive more love from God. And as I was doing that, I was actually walking down a trail that was keeping me further from the free, abundant life that God called through his son. One day, tearfully, I realized it. And God returned me uh, through his son Jesus to him. That's my prayer. That we can have a spiritual awakening. We can have a moment where God speaks to each of us. A moment where tears come through our hearts because of the love the Father has for us. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. If there's only one song that you walk away with out of all the songs in all of time, three lines, short song, the little ones can sing it in day school, Jesus loves me, this I know. The Bible holds the truth of God all throughout it, holds God's truth cover to cover, holds, holds an inerrant word, right? A word that doesn't have errors in it. A word that many men and women have looked at to find discrepancies. And yet, when they try to find what's wrong with God's word, they find what's wrong with them and what's right with God. And they fall in love with God and God changes their life. Jesus says, Father, sanctify them. Change them. Make them more Christ-like. I end with one scripture with you today. 1 Peter 4. If you'll allow me to use the message version, which is a contemporary version today, it reads very close to this. Learn to think like him. Because Christ has gone through everything you're going through and even more. So turn from your old habits. You can look it up, 1 Peter 4, first few verses. Learn to think like him. See, Jesus, Jesus died. And so far, none of us have been nailed to a tree lately that I know of, at least in the States here, right, for our faith. And it causes us to change the way we think, to think that Jesus went to the point of death and died on the cross, died a sinner's death, died, died wearing just hardly any clothing, beat to a pulp, tore up, bleeding, thorn of roses shoved around his head. He'd been beat, he'd been mocked, his clothes had been ripped, and Jesus was there looking down, and yet he had words to say like this, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Mother, behold, your son, he gave John the responsibility of looking after his mother, the widow. Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, it teaches in Matthew. Jesus, some of his last words were, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus was in control the whole time. All through the suffering, he could have stopped it. But Jesus didn't want the suffering to stop because he wanted our freedom to be paid in full. Jesus' love went to extremes that no human would do for another, let alone die. 
go to the pit of hell, grab the keys of life, and be returned to life by the Father on the third day. I can end this sermon for you real quick. Jesus loves you. Go in the New Testament. If you don't read the Bible, read the book of John. You can do it in three weeks, five minutes of reading every day. The book of John is a book of love, where you'll see the love of God, the love of Jesus, and the trust that Jesus had in the Father, and the trust that Jesus wants us to have in him so we can have an abundant life of freedom. Let us live as people who are free in Christ, who can trust God, take God at his word, and believe that the Father above made no mistakes when he created us, when he sent his Son, and on his path of redemption that he's laid out. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this time here today, and I ask God that you would help us uh, to, to come closer to you and that we can have that moment of redemption. And Lord, as we have that moment of redemption in our hearts and minds, that Lord, we can have that peaceful, easy feeling that comes only by way of the cross through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us a breath of life, breath of air, and that, God, that we're here and we can serve you. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.